Hola and welcome to today's pro Spanish lesson. If somebody asks you what was the concert like, you could answer that it was terrible, terrible. You could say it was interesante, interesting. Or you could say it was ameno, enjoyable, ameno, ameno. So terrible, interesante, ameno, enjoyable. All ways to describe a concert. But how would you say it was, it was terrible, it was interesting, it was enjoyable. The it was, we would use, is fue, fue, f-u-e. And this comes from the verb to be ser. So to describe what the concert was like, it was, would be fue, and then whatever your adjective is. So how would you say it was terrible? What would that be? Fue terrible. Fue terrible. How about it was enjoyable? It was enjoyable. What would that be? Fue ameno. Fue ameno. It was enjoyable. Uh, you probably know that to say not, it wasn't, didn't, whatever, we just put no at the beginning, no, no. So how would you say it wasn't interesting? It wasn't interesting. No fue interesante. No fue interesante. So fue it was when we are talking about an event, an event, a concert, a party, a football match, whatever it might be. We use fue, it was. A very useful and very common Spanish descriptive word is un rollo. Un rollo is a bore or a drag. If something was really a, a real drag, a real bore, they say un rollo, un rollo. So how would you say it was a drag, it was a bore? What would that be? Fue un rollo. Fue un rollo. To say it for me and for you in Spanish is para mí and para ti. So for me is para mí, for you, para ti. Para mí, para ti. How would you say, it was interesting for me? It was interesting for me. What would that be? Fue interesante para mí. Fue interesante para mí. How about, for me, it was terrible. What would that be? Para mí fue terrible. Para mí fue terrible. So, fue, it, was. But it's also the question, was it? Same word, fue, was it? Fue interesante. Was it interesting? How about the question, was it enjoyable for you? Was it enjoyable for you? Fue ameno. Para ti, fue ameno. Para ti, was it enjoyable for you? Okay, so let's now imagine that somebody's asking you about the party you went to. Uh, they would ask, ¿Qué tal la fiesta? ¿Qué tal la fiesta? How was the party? You can actually say with fue, ¿Qué tal fue la fiesta? ¿Qué tal fue la fiesta? How was the party? But it tends to get cut down to ¿Qué tal la fiesta? How was the party? And because fiesta is feminine, we would have to say fue amena, changing the ameno to amena so that it's also feminine. Fue amena. It was enjoyable. Divertido is fun. Divertido. How would you say it was fun? Talking about the, the party, the fiesta. It was fun. What would that be? Fue divertida. Fue 
divertida. It was fun. How about it was terrible for me? What would that be? It was terrible for me. Fue terrible para mí. Fue terrible para mí. So when you want to talk about events and describe events in the past, then we use fue. But what about if it isn't an event, but more something that goes on over time? For example, you might be asked, what was it like to study in Madrid? What was it like to study in Madrid? And you might still want to say, interesting, a bore, a drag. But now, because we are not referring to a single event, we're referring to something that was ongoing, we can't use fue. So what do we use? For it was, in this case, era. Era. We have to say era it was. So how would you say? Somebody asks you, what, is, what was it like studying in Madrid? It was interesting. What would that be? Era interesante. Era interesante. It was terrible. What would that be? Era terrible. Era terrible. How about, it was interesting for you, but it was a drag for me. It was interesting for you, but it was a drag for me. And remember, we're not referring now to the concert, the event, the party, the event. We're referring to this ongoing time at university. So how would we say that? Era interesante para ti. Pero un rollo para mí. Era interesante para ti, pero un rollo para mí. And maybe in the past uh, you were dating, let's say, Maria. Uh, you were going out with Maria. And somebody asks you now, what was it like um, going out with Maria? What was it like dating Maria? And you could say, it was fun. It was fun. How would you say that? It was fun. Era divertido. Era divertido. It was fun. We are not referring to a particular date, an event, but this ongoing period of time that you were dating Maria. And if it was one particular date, for example, the question might be, ¿Qué tal la noche con María? How was last night with María when you went out? ¿Qué tal? And you'd say, fue divertido. It was fun. But when we're talking about this ongoing time that happened in the past when you were going out, you were dating María, then that cannot be described as a single event. So we use... Era, era. And we can use era with a question. Just like fue was in a question, was it? Era is also was it as a question. So salir is to go out or to date in this context. Uh, con is with. So how would you say, was it fun to go out with Maria, was it fun to date Maria? What would that be? Era divertido salir con Maria. Era divertido salir con Maria. And we'll just take a brief pause there while I mention the levels 1 to 6 Pro Spanish course available for download from prospanish.co.uk. This course takes the complete beginner or near beginner right up to a conversational level of Spanish in a series of easy to follow steps. Okay, so back to the lesson. So let's have a quick recap before continuing. It was, so far, can be fue, to say it was interesting, it was exciting to describe an event, a concert, 
a party, something that happened, and era to describe not an event, a single event, but something that had been going on over some time. We would also use era to describe any object in the past. Now, by definition, describing what an object was like, the qualities of an object cannot be an event. The object, an experience, could be an event, but an object could not be an event. By definition, it was something that was ongoing, these, these qualities. So, whenever you are describing what an object was like, you will never use fue. So, let's say you've come back from holiday and somebody wants to know what was the hotel like. ¿Qué tal el hotel? ¿Qué tal el hotel? You cannot use fue. The hotel was not an event. So, you have to use era. So, how would you say, talking about the hotel, it was terrible. What would that be? Era terrible. Era Terrible. A word that could be used to describe some hotels could be lujoso, lujoso, luxurious. Oh, we might we might use the word posh. Lujoso, lujoso. How would you say? It was posh. It was posh. It was luxurious. What would that be? Era lujoso. Era Lujoso. How about the question? Was it posh? Was it luxurious? What would that be? Era lujoso. Era lujoso. And in size, it could be grande or it could be pequeño, small. Grande, big, pequeño, small. How would you say? It wasn't small. It wasn't small. What would that be? No era pequeño. No era pequeño. Okay, so for era, it's all to do with things that were ongoing. So your time at university, the time going out with or dating Maria, uh, these things were ongoing. The objects that you are describing from the past, all of those need era because they are not events. But the events would be described with fue. And because era is used to describe objects in the past, things in the past, and, and people in the past as well, uh, don't forget that fue is he, she, it was. Era, he, she, it was. It's just that we're focusing on, the, focusing on saying it was. But all of these things would also be he was or she was. And in terms of it was and he or she was, era would tend to have more, you'd have more occasion to use era. So if you are in two minds, about whether to use fue or era, use era initially, and then bit by bit you can think about whether that was the correct choice, whether perhaps you were describing an event and say so you could use fue, but you'll be right more often than not if you choose era. So we've done fue and era, which leaves estaba and estuvo. Now Estuvo has so few occasions to be used that you could just stick with estaba and not bother with the estuvo for the moment. We will cover some of the few times that it is used for it was, but estaba is far more, far more used than estuvo. So if you stuck with estaba, you'd be fine. Uh, you'll see, you'll see why now. Um, before we were using era to describe 
what an object was like. A hotel. Uh, it could be described what the food was like on your holiday. And these are all characteristics of something. And it would be the same for the person. If you're describing what he or she was like, you would be using the characteristics description. Era. Era muy guapa. She was very beautiful, very pretty. But you aren't always describing the characteristic of something. So, for example, the cup of tea could be hot. It was hot or it was cold. But that isn't a characteristic of tea or coffee. It's just that at that time, your coffee was cold or your coffee was too hot. Whatever it might be. So, caliente is hot and frío, cold. Caliente, hot, frío, cold. So in terms of it was, hot and cold will be used with estaba, estaba, because we're not talking about the characteristic of something as we were before, big, small, posh, whatever it might be. It's something more transient than that. So um, how would you say Let's say we're talking about your coffee. How was the coffee? It was cold. What would that be? Estaba frío. Estaba frío. How about it wasn't hot? It wasn't hot. What would that be? No estaba caliente. No estaba caliente. The words for full and empty, full and empty, lleno, lleno, and vacío, 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 a bit like a vacuum, vacío, so empty, lleno, full, vacío, empty. Let's say somebody asked you, what was the beach like? ¿Qué tal la playa? Uh, you might want to say, it was full, meaning that it was crowded, it was full. How would you say it was full? And just remember, you're talking about la playa, which is feminine. So how would you say it was full? Estaba llena. Estaba llena. And we couldn't say era llena, because that would be talking about, we would be wanting to describe a characteristic, as in going back to our hotel, big, small, posh. We're talking about something that now is full, but maybe later it won't be. It's not a characteristic. It's a, a state, a state of affairs, we could say. And how would you say it was empty? What would that be? It was empty. Estaba vacía. Estaba vacía. It was empty. So, estaba, when we're saying not what a characteristic of something was, but what it was like at that, at that time. Uh, another very important use for estaba is to say where something was. If you've done any work on estar, you'll know that Estar is used for location. It's used to say where something is. So, estaba, anytime you're saying where it was. Estaba en el coche. It was in the car. But my book, whatever I left there, it was in the car. Uh, how would you say it was in the hotel? It was in the hotel. What would that be? Estaba en el hotel. Estaba en el hotel. How about you couldn't find your wallet and then you found it and it was on the beach or in the beach. You can use en. It was on the beach. How would you say that? Estaba en la playa. Estaba en la playa. La playa. 
uh, the hotel could be near the beach. The hotel. So it was near the beach. Near is cerca de. Cerca de. So how would you say it was near the beach? Estaba cerca de la playa. Estaba cerca de la playa. So, estaba, to describe something that isn't a characteristic, but something that's more temporary or that's changeable. Hot, cold, full, empty. And to say where it was. In fact, where was it would be donde estaba. Donde estaba. Where was it? Donde estaba. And so that just leaves us with estuvo. And I'm not going to dedicate this much time because in pretty much any case where you say estuvo, if you said estaba instead of estuvo, it's very unlikely it would be recognized as a mistake. There is a tendency to use estuvo more in Latin America than in Spain. For example, to say it was okay, it was okay. Uh, in Spain, the tendency would be very much to say estaba bien, estaba bien. And in Latin America, estuvo bien, estuvo bien. And there are a few more examples like that. So uh, let's say it was about to rain, for example, it was about to. In Spain, uh, you would say estaba a punto de, it was about to, estaba a punto de llover, it was about to rain. And in Latin America, there'd be more of a tendency to say estuvo a punto de llover, estuvo a punto de llover. Uh, in Spain, the tendency would be to say estaba listo, it was ready, estaba listo, it was ready. Whereas in Latin America, they might well say estuvo listo, estuvo listo. Uh, the point I'd like to get across is that if you say estaba instead of estuvo, you will very, very rarely be wrong, uh, whereas you are likely to make more mistakes if you used estuvo consistently. And that concludes today's pro Spanish lesson. As mentioned before, if you're looking to become a confident and a competent speaker of Spanish, head over to prospanish.co.uk where you can download the full Levels 1 to 6 course.